a 50 millimeter lens isn't as standard as it used to be, with today's wide angle to telephoto zooms being so good, but it's still a useful and relatively inexpensive tool to have. Being a wide aperture lens, it'll produce a shallow depth of field. These lenses are sharp enough to use wide open for close-ups. Just as with a wide angle lens, you need to be careful not to use it so close to the subject that you get an exaggerated body part near the camera. Here I was too close to her head. Shooting perpendicular to the subject is a way to eliminate the apparent perspective distortion, as long as you're not too close and the subject's face is aimed at the camera. That could cause a big nose. Not a popular thing for high school seniors. Backing up is a way to reduce the apparent distortion of a wider lens. I had this senior tilt her head away from the lens to avoid any of that kind of distortion. So now we know that this is not a good use of the lens. The top of his head looks too big because it's the closest thing to the camera. But if we get the lens down parallel to his body, all is good. And then we can play with it and find creative ways to use its focal length and fast aperture. These types of images can be good album fillers. While a 50mm lens is fine for fuller length images, an 85mm lens is a better choice for closer images with full frame cameras. I chose this lens for times that I want to shoot some spontaneous images without a tripod. Most lenses have a bit of vignetting or darkening around the corners of the image at wide open f-stops. That can actually make a nice subtle vignette for a mid-key or a low-key image. Wide open, you'll get an extremely shallow depth of field that's pretty helpful when shooting a little farther away, and especially for fuller length portraits. For me it works best for handheld freestyle types of images. I can move around and try things that I would never do with a tripod mounted camera. The camera properly focused on her near eye But the other eye is pretty far out of focus. That's not a bad thing, but you need to make sure that the near eye is sharp. Camera sensors today are capable of some pretty phenomenal results at very high ISOs. This is very acceptable for a wall portrait, but keep in mind that a very high ISO image is not only noisy, but the noise reduces detail sharpness. Digital noise can be reduced to a reasonable degree in noise reduction software, but it can't invent sharp details when they were soft to start with. 